Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a quick brief look at Ableton Live 8. Just going to have a look at how to get around its interface and where it's got everything laid out so that you can get stuck straight in and start making some tunes with it. If you're after something a bit more advanced, I'd recommend checking out one of our other free Ableton tutorials. However, if you're curious to see how to find your way around Ableton Live, this one's the one for you. So, as you can see, we're looking at an empty live session at the moment, which you can get to by going to the File menu or clicking New Live Set. And currently we're looking at the Session View, which is the view that we do all of our mixing and live performance work in. It allows you to play back audio and MIDI clips independently of one another. It also gives you access to things such as your send levels and your mixer controls. And by clicking our little buttons over the right hand side here, we can get access to our input and output controls, our send levels, our auxiliary return tracks, our master controls for our mixer, our track delays, and also our crossfader. So a lot of handy features in there. By clicking this button up the top right here, we can get to our arrangement view, which is where you'd arrange a track and do all the sort of standard work that you do with pretty much any other piece of audio software. And again, you've got a, a few buttons over the right hand side here that give you access to the various controls, including our input and output controls, our main mixer controls, and also our track delays, similar to what you get with the session view. Over on the left hand side we've got our live browser which gives us access to our live instruments, MIDI and audio effects. You can open up any one of those folders and you can see the various devices that Live has in there. You can also open up the device folder and get access to a bunch of different presets for each device which is also quite handy if you don't want to try and create a sound from scratch. The next button down on the left hand side gives us access to our external plugins. If you've got VST or AU plugins installed and have the folder settings set up in the Live preferences, then Live will give you access to those. Fairly similar to the way Live has its devices set up. It will give you access to your own third-party plugins similarly. The next three buttons that we've got on the left-hand side here give us access to the computer's hard drives or external drives, allow you to access your audio and MIDI files so that you can drag those into your live set, and you can also drag audio and MIDI files as well as device presets straight back into the browser so that you can save them which is quite handy, it means you don't have to go through a whole pile of menus to be able to save your own presets or clips. And you can also click the little arrow up the top here to be able to access different parts of your computer with one click. You can also change the sort order of different items in the browser by clicking either the name or various other elements that you can see up the top here, including modified date, the type, which live packet belongs to, or its name. Over to the left we've also got a button to access our live groove pool, which allows you to apply various grooves or quantization to various audio and MIDI clips, which can be quite handy. As you can see, you can grab hold of the little space here and drag that out if you need to or drag it up, make it bigger or smaller as you need to, or click the button and hide it completely. Down the bottom we've got access to our clip view currently, which allows us to edit audio and MIDI clips and change various parameters, as well as doing in-clip automation, which is independent of any automation that you may do within the arrangement view itself. So you can actually do clip automation and automation within the arrangement view both at the same time and Live will automatically work it all out for you. 
By clicking our other little button down the bottom here, you can get access to our instrument and effect rack, which allows us to edit various MIDI audio effects and instruments, which is quite handy. And the button in the bottom right corner allows us to show or hide the rack or the clip view completely, which can be quite handy if you're low on screen space. Down the bottom left, we've got another little button which allows us to pop up our info view. So we can put the mouse cursor over pretty much any control in live or in live's devices and we can get a bit of a description on what it is and how it can be used. So it's quite a handy feature that one. Up the top of the screen we've got access to our tempo and time signature controls as you can see currently using a 120 beats per minute with a 4-4 time signature. Next to that we've got our transport controls which shows us where we're up to with our play position as well as our typical play, stop and record arm buttons. Following that we've got access to our loop controls which allows us to create a loop in the arrangement view if you just want to hear back a particular section by clicking the button in the middle you can turn the loop on so that it'll automatically keep looping that region and finally on the right hand side we've got access to various controls that allow us to bind keyboard keys and MIDI devices to various controls in live as well as a CPU meter and a disk access meter the CPU and disk access meters are there to allow you to see exactly how hard you're pushing the various components of your computer. You'll find if you do push the, the hard drive or the CPU meter too hard that you will end up with clicky or glitchy sounding audio which can be quite unpleasant. But as you will see from some of our following tutorials, there is a fair few different ways that Live provides you to reduce your CPU usage, which is also quite handy. So I hope you've learnt something from our little tutorial on how to navigate around live and look forward to seeing you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.